So I show you these things. To get the wisdom of God into you. So you know how to deal with thoughts that come to you. How to deal with circumstances. The things that tempt you. I'm just in that guy, you know, he's, he's sitting down. He says, oh, I'm so tired. No more. He says, oh, I'm so tired. The more tired he is. He says, oh, I'm so tired. I'm really, I, can, I just can't do anything. I can't go anywhere. Oh, boy, I, I, can't, I can't go out today. I feel so tired. I had a long day. I had a very, very hard day. I can't go, I can't go for the service. No, 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 not me. I'm too tired. Mm -mm -mm, next week. Then you, There's fire in the kitchen. Hotcha! Where did he get the strength from? I thought he was too tired to get up. Now there's fire and he's, <laughs> he had it in him all the time. He had, he had it in him all the time. He talked himself out of it, convinced himself he couldn't do it. You know what? Don't do what your mind tells you to do. Do what you ought to do. That's the way to check your life. What you ought to do, what is right. This is the right thing to do, so do it. Because it is the right thing to do. Not because you feel so, not because you think so, but because you know this is the right thing to do. You may not want it, but does the word say so? If the word of God tells you this is the way, then that's the way, go ahead and do it. That's the way to train your spirits, to get your mind to succumb to your spirits. Don't let your mind dominate your spirit. Hallelujah. Are you still here? So Saul desired the approval of men. You know, Saul's passion for human honor was so strong that his repentance was not genuine. His passion for human acceptance, his passion for human honor was too strong. So strong. His attitude was wrong. He defended himself. It's not me. They, they, they made me do it. In other words, they did it. They did it, he said. They did it. When he found out he was involved, he said, well, they made me do it. Look at David. Second Samuel chapter 24. I'm reading verse 10. See this man's attitude, this dear man of God. David had, he had numbered Israel and he knew it was wrong to do so. But look at this, verse 10. And David's heart smote him after that he had numbered the people. And David said unto the Lord, I have sinned greatly in what I have done. And now I beseech thee, O Lord, take away the iniquity of thy servant, for I have done very foolishly. Did you see that? He said, I have done what? Very foolishly. He didn't say they. He says, I have done very foolishly. Most touching. God took actions against him in spite of the fact he said he had done very foolishly. God gave him three options. He said, choose one. I'll do this to you or this or this or this. Now, now I'm going to deal with you. Well, God took actions against him. But look at this. And, and one of those options meant that several people in the land were going to be punished for what he did. Watch the man's attitude. Turn to verse 17. Verse 17. And David spake unto the Lord when he saw the angel that smote the people and said, Lo, I have sinned and I have done wickedly, but these sheep, what have they done? Let thine hand, I pray thee, be against me and against my father's house. Can you see the attitude of this man? He's, he sees the people dying because of his own actions. So he says, Oh God. I, I was the one who did wickedly. I was the one who sinned. But these ones, what have they done? What have they done? I should be the one to be punished. He took responsibility for it. Saul wouldn't take responsibility. He has a different spirit. Then what about his attitude towards people? He didn't feel that it was the people. Psalm 51. This had to do with his second sin. In Psalm 51, you find his attitude here in verses 3 and 4. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. Thou mightest 
Be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Did you see that? I've sinned against you. He doesn't think he's, he owes anybody anything. He's not thinking about people now. He thinks about, it's God, I, I, I've sinned against God. You see, when your focus is right, your life turns out right. The man's focus was right. His focus was right. Even when his son, his son declared war against him and he was running away, there was a man who was cursing David with curses. And um, his captain said, let me go and strike that man who's accusing you and cursing the king. He said, no, leave him. He said, maybe the Lord will hear him and then forgive me. He said that before the captain. He wasn't ashamed to acknowledge that he did something wrong. What do you learn? Who do you learn from? The Bible says, do not learn from a violent man. He says, don't go with a violent man lest you learn his ways. If you have someone that's close to you and, and is hot-tempered, everything, anything makes him mad, don't get close to him. The Bible says, lest you learn his ways. He doesn't want you to learn his ways. We are influenced by the people we run with. And don't you be proud of a wrong attitude. Don't be, don't be proud with something wrong in your character. Something that ought to be taken away. The Bible talks about those people. He said they are proud of what they should, they should be ashamed of. Their God is their appetite. All they think about is this life here on earth. We read that in Philippians, the third chapter, reading from the 17th verse. He says they are proud of what they should be ashamed of. Living Bible. Just write TLB. King James says, whose glory is in their shame? shouldn't be proud. You know, I, 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 have, I, have, a, I have a hot temper. What do you mean you have a hot temper? Get it away. What do you need with it? Praise the Lord. Are you still in this place? Yes. Lastly, we look at a lady. St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 10. She's found there in the 38th chapter, 38th verse. St. Luke's Gospel, chapter number 10. Oh, I find this woman interesting. Now it came to pass as they went that Jesus entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was combat. Did you see that? Martha was combat. In other words, distracted. That's the word. Martha was distracted. She was combat about much serving. And, and came to him. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, does thou not care that my sister had left me to serve alone? Be thou therefore that she help me. And she answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art worried. King James is careful and troubled about many things. But one thing is needful. And Mary has chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. Mary has chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. He said, Martha, Martha. You are troubled, you are worried about many things. But one thing is needful. There's something you require. You're worried about many things, distracted. You're distracted. But one thing is necessary. You see, you may not understand this whole part until you know the person of matter. I think I should explain this matter to you. You get to know her in St. John's Gospel, chapter 11. Now, Martha is a very forward person. Now, notice it was a house Jesus came. Now, Jesus didn't come to visit Mary. Notice that. Jesus came to visit Martha. The Bible tells us about Martha and tells us the minor. She had a sister called Mary. Jesus came to Martha. Martha received Jesus into her house. So she's the one who introduces the rest of the family to Jesus. So she's the main person that Jesus knows in this home. So Jesus comes to Martha. 
Martha receives Jesus in. She has a sister called Mary. She has a brother called Lazarus. But who received Jesus in? Martha was. She did. All right? Now, you're going to see her character. She's quite forward. Her brother Lazarus gets sick. Now, notice this. Jesus comes into the home in St. Luke's Gospel. And what does she do? Quick, make food. Get something for Jesus. She doesn't even know what Jesus wants. But make food. Get this for Jesus. She's getting everything that is unnecessary to the master. This is the man who fed 5,000 men. Women and children were not counted. What food will you give him? Instead of listening to his word, she's going about all the unimportant things. You want to cook for him? Let me tell you about him. After his resurrection, his disciples had gone back to fishing. And uh, Jesus came. They, they saw him on the shore. They didn't know it was Jesus. And uh, Jesus said, children, do you have any meat? They had toiled all night, couldn't catch nothing. And Jesus said, all right, catch your net on the right side of the boat you shall have. And they did, and they enclosed a multitude of fishes. Then uh, they had a problem bringing it to land. And Jesus said, well, take out of the fishes that you have and come over this way. By the time they came, they found Jesus had fried fish. Listen, the Bible didn't say he was, he was making it there. Where did the fire come from? Read it for yourself in the last chapters in John's Gospel. He brought all those things alive into that place. Then he said, add from the ones you have. You know why? Because he wanted them to have the opportunity to compare the two of them together. The miracle fish and the river fish. That's why he said, bring from the ones you have. He joined it, not because he couldn't have made enough. He wants them to test this one and taste that one. When he turned dishwater, dishwater, you remember dishwater? All the things they used in washing themselves, they put them inside that thing and washed them with that water. The Bible says they put it by the door. Jesus turned that water into wine. Now, he didn't do anything. Into, he didn't do anything. He said, now fill them up. Fill them up. There was some water because people had been using them, so it was shorter. So he said, fill them up. And he added more to the dishwater. Jesus said, take out of that one now. Take it to the chairman of the occasion. And when the man did it, he, he, he took it. He didn't know where the water came from. The Bible says it was the servants who knew where the water came from. And they were watching. And the chairman, whoo! He said, I've never had a drink so good in my life. And the servants were amazed because they knew, the Bible says, they knew where the water came from. So the one who got wine, who turned water into wine, dish water, <laughs> and was frying fish, and nobody knew where the fire came from or where the containers came from. And I guarantee you, Jesus wouldn't be carrying a frying pan like this in town. <laughs> Nor would he have gone to buy fish from anybody. <laughs> this woman wants to cook for him. <laughs> All right. I just want you to know who Martha really is. We find Martha in St. John's Gospel, the 11th chapter. Now she sends a message to Jesus. Him whom thou lovest is sick. Lazarus is sick. Please hurry up and come and heal him. Because he was a miracle worker and had come to their house several times. So they expected Jesus to naturally be so moved and quickly come. But Jesus delayed. He didn't go. <laughs> now you're going to know matter. Four days later, that was four days after the man had died, Jesus came. The Bible tells us someone came to Martha and Mary. They were both in the house. And they said, Jesus is here. Mary was still crying. She was there in the house. Martha ran straight to Jesus. You would think she was going to welcome him. No! She was mad. Here's a lady who was forward. She felt she was popular with the master. She knew the master. Why didn't he come? It had been a problem to her. Why didn't Jesus come for my brother? He had healed everybody. He had been to our house. I had given him food. Now he wouldn't even come to heal my brother. 
when you start thinking that you qualify for the master's blessings by reason of your own things, your good things that you have done for him, you're in the wrong place. Soon as she saw Jesus, she said, oh, she accused him of lateness and a lack of care. Read it for yourself. If you had been here four days ago, my brother would not have died. She hasn't even said my brother is dead. She accuses him. If you had been here four days ago, you think it was a statement of faith. No. She was too forward. I'll give you more. If you had been here four days ago, my brother would not have died. She puts the responsibility on Jesus. Jesus says, your brother shall live again. Yeah, I know he'll live on the last day in the resurrection. See, she's preaching it. She, she's, she, in other words, don't hand me that stuff. I already know that. Everybody's going to come out on the last day. Anyway, Jesus says, where have you laid him? They go there. On getting to that place, there's a crowd. Martha is there. Mary is there. Many Jews are there. A lot of the leaders of the Jews are there. And Jesus says, roll the stone away. Guess who tries to stop Jesus? Martha. Now she accuses him of trying to desecrate the dead. No! By now, he stinks. He's been there four days. Mother can't be still. Her blood is very hot. Are you like Mata? Her blood is too hot. She has to be in control. See, she can't be okay. She has to be in control. She has to manipulate. She has to put everybody in his place. She has to organize Jesus. What's he doing? What's he doing? Is he, what's he doing? Is he, what's he doing? What's he doing? Please stop. Jesus says, didn't I tell you? If you would only believe, you'd see the glory of God. Now roll the stone away. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. He didn't let matter intimidate him. You cursed it. If you had been here four days, Jesus said, your brother will rise again. I know he'll rise on the last day, but it's going to come out. I know that. Well, Jesus says, you are looking at the resurrection and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. She didn't know Jesus. She had fed this man, but didn't know him. To her, he was a miracle worker. A good minister, a nice preacher. I like him. He's a good man. That was all. Had she known that Jesus was God, it would have been different. The moment Jesus showed up, she would go down. Welcome. Anytime you come is the right time, sir. She would have known. Because he says, I am God. Is there anything too hard for me? She hadn't known him. She hadn't known him. People who are too forward, they're that way. They always think they know too much. Are you like that? Be careful. We have satellite church pastors here. Some of you are from satellite churches. What do you think of the pastor? I know. Maybe when you see him, you buy him a bottle of Coke and he drinks it. So you say, I drink Coke, he drinks Coke. Is it because the pastor laid hands on him the other day? That's what, we were together in the class. I did the training program. He did the training program. Is it because they anointed him pastor before me? I'm a coordinator, but he's a pastor, but we are the same. Be careful. Don't be too forward. Be careful. See, you may never be able to appreciate something that you cannot perceive. It takes the Spirit of God to open your eyes to see. It takes the Spirit of God to open your eyes to see. I pray that he would open your eyes. I pray that he would guide you and instruct you. That one thing that is needed in your life 
I pray that he will help you to get it. Amen. That it will come into your life through the word of God. That you discover, if you have been unfaithful, that you will become faithful. 